For today's video, I bought some more dodgy crap from everybody's favorite source for, well, dodgy crap, Wish. Whenever I go onto Wish.com looking for some more dodgy crap for one of these videos, it's always very difficult to choose what to buy because you're just so smacked in the face with options that you don't even know where to start. Now, the other day I did a video where I tried very hard not to get scammed on Wish and I kind of pulled it off. If you shop around, you can find electronics that are actually what they seem on the website. Not entirely, but kind of. However, when I saw this power supply on the website, I knew this was 100% too good to be true and it may actually set something on fire. So I decided to buy one just to show you why you shouldn't be buying something as important as a power supply on Wish. Now in today's video, I'm going to do the standard unboxing of the product. I'm going to do an overnight stress test in a system with the power supply because well, I don't have official kit to actually test it with. And then I'm gonna open it up to see what this power supply looks like inside. So stick around for all of that. Now, as is tradition with all of the David Does Tech Stuff Wish videos, I'm gonna do a quick unboxing. Now, the main reason that I do this is because Wish packaging is hilarious. Um, although this time it was shipped differently. It's in a old, very destroyed cardboard box as opposed to the normal style of shipping, which is usually just like 17 layers of plastic bag. But anyway, on the back here, we've got something which is very interesting. What's really weird on this invoice is the actual unit value that they specify for this power supply because here they say very clearly it's $32 and 750 cents uh, which is a bit weird it's a weird way to put it but that's not what I paid for this power supply that's not what it's worth um, but anyway with that weirdness out of the way let's open it up um, and oh there we go this is the actual power supply and it's got a massive fan. Um, it's got a plug that we don't use here. What country plug is that? I don't actually know. Um, yeah, so it's okay packaged, I guess. And here we have a 1,500 watt power supply. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it isn't actually modular so that you have all these cables. There's no indication on the actual unit who makes it. There's like a weird symbol here, which doesn't really mean anything to me. And then it just says power supply. Now let's actually have a look at the, at the ratings here on the power supply. Now I'm gonna have to turn it to myself to see here. Now, interestingly enough, this power supply actually has two 12 volt rails. It seems as um, they're, they're both about 55 amps and together they deliver 1,310 watts. But yeah, anyway, let's tear it open. Okay, that's not a very sturdy feeling thing at all. Like this flexes a lot. The actual metal on this box, like the actual box that it's in is very, very fragile feeling. And it almost looks like it's used because there's like dirt and stuff on it. But okay, let's have a look at this. We have a 24 pin power cable. So this is for your motherboard. And then we have not very much. This is the actual 8-pin for the CPU. And then you have a dual 8-pin, um, which is, it's one cable. And that's all of the actual hardware power that you have available. That seems very limited for a 1,500 watt power supply, considering the fact that you can only plug in like one graphics card with this. And then here you have uh, two little bushels of SATA cables, and then you have one Molex. This is the kind of cabling assortment that you have with a significantly lower output power supply. I have to admit, I'm quite terrified to actually use this power supply. This is one of the more sketchy power supplies I've ever seen. Now here we have the setup that I'm gonna to use to test the power supply. So the graphics card is a GTX 285. Um, and then I've got an i5 7600K in there on a Gigabyte Gaming 5 Z170 board with uh, 16 gigs of RAM and then the power supply over there. Now, 
the specific reason that I'm using these components is because they're like my sacrificial components. Okay, so let's switch it on and see what happens. Okay, well, nothing's exploded. Um, it seems to be powering on, actually. Oh, it's working. And then as you can see here, it's actually got a green LED ring on the fan. Now, it's been running for about 20 minutes now, and nothing's caught on fire yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run IDA64 and Furmark overnight and see what happens. And just like that, it's been running for, come on, focus, almost 18 hours. And as you can see, it's still here. Nothing's caught on fire, nothing's died yet. Now I did some quick calculations about how much power this power supply can actually output based on these power cables that it has available. Now I just want to quickly say that this is not by any means 100% accurate. Let me know in the comment section below if you have a different calculation uh, because maybe you know more about this stuff than I do. But based on some information I found on the internet, um, I calculated that with these cables you can get about 950 watts from this power supply into components before things start setting on fire just because of like actual cable and connector overload and stuff like that. I was definitely really stupid about how I did this because I definitely should have opened it up and had a look before I actually used it uh, so it didn't have any stored electricity in it. Whereas now it's all primed and ready to, to kill me. But I've tried to isolate myself from the floor and I'm going to be very, very careful. Okay, this is actually not like the wrong part of the oh there we go there's some some opening is happening okay i don't know if you just saw that but i didn't unscrew the fan screw there it just pulled out of place um so that's pretty dodgy oh this is so terrifying Okay, there we go. Now, first things first, it actually comes with a Thermaltake fan. So I don't know if that means that Thermaltake was somehow involved in the production process of this power supply, uh, but that's quite interesting. It's actually not the worst fan ever. And then you can see the metal construction or the housing of this power supply is not ideal. Let me give you a bit of a closer look. Um, you can see there's quite a few heat sinks in here i don't really know what i'm looking at to be honest I, I i don't know whether or not this kind of componentry is capable of delivering 1500 watts now the only capacitor that i can identify is that one which is made by a company called rubicon and it is actually a japanese made capacitor um it doesn't tell me anything about how much it can actually deliver uh, the rest of the components I can't actually identify like when you google those names nothing comes up so I don't have any indication of the actual um, of the actual quality of these components because well I can't identify any of this stuff if you know what these things are please let me know in the comment section below what kind of componentry we're working with here so with that I don't really have a lot more that I can say about this power supply because Honestly, I don't know a huge amount about the internals of power supplies, and I don't have the equipment to test the claims that this manufacturer makes about the specs of this power supply. Now, one thing that I will say is that the power supply does work. I didn't have to modify it to actually have it fulfill its basic purpose. I don't have a way to see whether or not it can hit 1,500 watts, but you know, you can use it to power the average gaming system. And who actually needs 1,500 watts for a system? Although I wouldn't recommend buying it because you know, it doesn't have something like an 80 plus certification, which means that it hasn't 
haven't met some kind of test criteria which shows that you can put the life of all of your components in its hands, I would get something a lot more reputable than this. And with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. I've got a Twitch account where I stream every weekend, so go and follow me there. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all of those things. It's all linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.